morning and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. Today I'm working on a piece that will be part of a group project for the Rocky Mountain Smiths. Typically this is something we do as part of our annual conference, but there's not going to be a conference this year, so we're doing this as individuals in our own shop, and everybody that chooses to participate will then mail their piece into a central location and somebody will assemble all these into a quilt. And each quilt square is based on four inches square. What that four inches square looks like is entirely up to the person making it. So for mine, I'm starting with a piece of quarter inch plate and I've laid out and started to chisel cut diagonally in the center of this. And I'm going to cut all the way through and then push this out so it looks like it's been blown out from the back side of it. And then I'm going to go on and add an element to that. But the first thing to do is to get this taken care of. I also think I want to texture this piece up a little bit. I think it's going to be a little bit boring. So I'm going to add a little bit of gratuitous texture. Something I don't do very often, but I think it will help this piece. And for that, I've got a cutting plate that I use in the treadle hammer that has just been chopped up over the years. And it makes a pretty good texturing die for that kind of stuff. So I'll turn the piece over on this and just texture it real quick under the treadle hammer. You know, I'm actually seeing some sort of a North Star effect or something like that here. And I think just leaving it chisel cut would look pretty good. So I'm going to probably cut some more of this material this size and try a few other options out. This one I'm going to go ahead and continue with my original plan. But always stop and look at your work because you might see something you weren't expecting and you might like that idea. Okay, I see daylight through that now. Now I'm going to drive a square drift through from the back to push that out the front. They don't have a flatter that fits all the way to the edges, so it's a little hard to flatten. Where there's a will, there's a way. So that's what I'm after for the back plate, I think. It needs to be cleaned up with a file or a die grinder to get rid of some of the burrs. Easy enough to do. So that's our main quilt square done, and my idea is to push something out through the middle of this. Lots of things you could probably do with this. You can kind of envision the monster from the movie Alien poking his head out of this. Maybe a dragon or a snake or some sort of comedy cartoonish character sticking their head out of this. I thought about maybe a hand with a hammer sticking out, but I'm not sure how exactly to go about that. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put a flower in this. So it's kind of like a flower pushing its way out of the ground, except it's a piece of steel. And to start that flower, I'm going to use some of my pre-cut rose blanks. And I'm just going to use two of the smallest ones. These are four petals each. I'll texture these and then we'll assemble them and give them some shape with a torch. And hopefully this will be a nice looking flower emanating out of the middle of this square. Now I have a limit on the depth here. Besides four inches square here, it can't be any deeper than four inches this way. So I have to make sure I keep that in kind of close. So it's going to be a real short stem on this flower. 
first thing I'm going to do is use a cross beam hammer to add some texture to the petals of the flower. With these textured, I'm going to add a raised vein down the center. I think that'll look good. I'm not real sure what it'll look like, but I'm going to try it anyways. And to do that, I'm going to use this veining tool. It just has a low place there that I can drive a fuller down into and put the petal on top of it. That's what that starts like. Not very interesting. And I want to kind of roll that over. To do that, I've got to put my palm of my hand to hold the back and kind of work the fuller around the front. I'm sure you can't see what I'm doing very well. bit more what I'm going for. Do that to all four. I want to dish it down in the middle a little bit, make those kick up. The last thing I want to do is just refine this and dish this a little bit more. I think these are too flat. And for that, I'm just going to work over this little ball stake in the vise. And with any luck, that will make an interesting little flower element. We'll put this on a stem with kind of a dome head rivet effect in the middle that I may add some texture to just to make this more interesting right in the center of the flower element. I'm going to do that just like I would if I were making a rivet, but I'm going to start with 5 8 round bar, put a nice long stem on it so I have enough for the flower stem, then we'll cut it off and make the head where I cut it off. I think I'll do that under the power hammer just because it's going to be a lot faster and a lot simpler to do it that way. Even under the power hammer, you still go square, octagon, then round. I just want to take a moment and hot rasp the sharp point off of the end of this. And then into a heading plate to clean it up. This rivet header may be a little bit on the small side, but it's the biggest one I have, so I'll see if it works. If not, we'll just hand form this. Now that's definitely too small a heading tool for this, so I'm going to go out and grind that little ridge off of there and then we'll just finish that by hand. Black Bear Forge is sponsored by Combat Abrasives. Use the link in the video description and the coupon code BLACKBEAR10 for a discount on your next order.
So I don't want those stacked right on top of each other. I want them at 45 degrees here. I think I'm going to torch weld back here. But that's the basic flower. Then of course this is going to need some way to attach it to the back plate. And I'm thinking some roots so it looks good from the back side as well as the front side. I'm hoping to be able to kind of round these up and clean them up some so they look more like roots than just sawn off metal. But they are very thin and very weak. I'll take just a moment with a die grinder and try and clean that weld up a little bit. Go ahead and add my touch mark to the plate before I weld the flower in. Now my original thought on how to hold this flower into the back of the plate was that the root system would do that for me. But that is so thin and so delicate, I think that's merely an ornamental element of this now. I'm going to go ahead and weld the heavier part of the stem to the plate just before it exits the plate and that way it'll be good and secure and then I'll probably try to put a little tack weld on parts of the roots so they can't get snagged and bent out. We'll just have to see what works well. They are so thin they'll be really easy to burn so I have to be super careful with that. As I work with the roots, I'm going to try and twist them and bend them and make them look as organic as possible. They still have some kind of sharp edges from sawing them, but I think I can camouflage most of that, make it so it's not quite so obvious. And finally, the flower needs to point in a nice direction, just whatever I think is aesthetically pleasing. And it cannot protrude more than four inches from the back of the plate. The whole thickness can't be more than four inches.
a little bit of brass wire brush to give it some highlight. But I don't want that much on that center piece. Be safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next video.